so much. Ah, this is great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cuyahoga County. Wow. Look at you guys. Man. Oh, thanks. This is awesome. Woo. Wow. Ah. Ah. Thank you. Ah, it is great. Ah, hey. Oh. Look at Miami. That's awesome. Hey, Cuyahoga, Cuyahoga County, are we going to turn this country around or what? I see somebody holding a Miami banner right back there. Uh, I just got to see one of my old roommates, one of my buddies, Pat Curran, who was one of my Miami buddies. We were at the Buckeye Miami game on Saturday. Yeah, I, okay. <laughs> and somebody once told me that the Buckeyes have not lost to an in state team in over a hundred years. Is that true? Man, what a streak that is. You know, I want to thank you all for coming out. Thank you all for standing in all these lines to get here. It is just. Thank you. It's, such, it's just so heartwarming to see so many people who are concerned about the direction of our country. Friends, Ohio is the epicenter. Ohioans, you have a tremendous responsibility, but you also have a great opportunity. We've got a really clear choice of two futures. It's crystal clear. We can stick with the path that President Obama has placed us on. That's right. It's a nation in debt, in doubt, a nation in decline. Or we can put real reforms in place and get the American idea back on track and get America back on track. You know, President Obama and too many politicians like him in Washington have been more concerned about their next election than they have about the next generation. We're not going to do that. We're going to lead. We need leaders to fix this problem, to see the moment for what it is. We need Jim Renacci to come back to the House of Representatives. We need Josh Mandel to be your next United States Senator. We want to earn your support. We want to deserve this victory so that we have the mandate and the moral authority to fix this mess in Washington. Look, let's be very candid. President Obama inherited a difficult situation when he came into office. Here's the problem. He made things worse. <laughs> He's run out of ideas. He can't run on his record. He's run out of ideas, and that's why his campaign is now sadly based upon the politics of envy and division. You know, they're in Charlotte this week. They have their convention. We're going to hear the president say lots of things, but what we probably will not hear him say is something he said four years ago. Let me quote. If you don't have a record to run on, then you paint your opponent as someone people should run from. <laughs> Friends, that is exactly what he is doing right now. I remember a convention speech. I was a pretty young guy at the time, but I remember a convention speech. Remember Ronald Reagan talking about Jimmy Carter? Are you better off now than you were four years ago? Well, you know what? We knew it then, we know it now. They fired Carter and they hired Reagan, and we're going to do the same thing this time.
I think it's an interesting comparison. Because you really can't look at the data. You can't look at the suffering families or the jobs loss or the debt crisis that's hanging over our economy and honestly say that we're better off than we were four years ago. As a matter of fact, President Obama's record is worse than Jimmy Carter's record. <laughs> look at unemployment. In the Carter presidency, in July of 1980, the unemployment rate was 7.8%. For the last 42 months under President Obama, it's been above 8% the entire time. Look at the number of seriously delinquent mortgages. At the end of 1980, 77,000. Last quarter, 3.1 million. In 1980, total bankruptcy filings. That's personal and business bankruptcies. That's paychecks. That's family livelihoods. That's jobs. In 1980, 331,000 total bankruptcies. Last year, 1.4 million. When it comes to jobs, President Obama makes the Jimmy Carter years look like good old days. <laughs> if we fired Jimmy Carter then, why would we rehire Barack Obama now? President Obama can tell you a lot, and he's good at doing that, but he cannot tell you that you're better off. After, getting, after four years of getting the runaround, what America needs is a turnaround. And the man for that job is Mitt Romney. Look at this man, his example, his life. It is a person of absolute leadership. You, you remember the Olympics back in the late 1990s? Remember all the corruption, the wasteful spending, the bloat that was in Salt Lake? Sounds kind of familiar today, doesn't it? <laughs> you know what they did? They had a scandal on their hands, so they called a guy in Massachusetts asked him to drop everything, leave his life, move to Salt Lake for three years, and fix the mess. This man did that. He answered the call, he served his country, and he turned around the Olympics and made us proud because of that. Just look at what this man accomplished in his business career. And by the way, having business experience, that's a pretty good thing, don't you think? <laughs> More importantly, being successful in business, that's a good thing too. <laughs> we don't resent that. We like that. <laughs> we do not envy people who are who's successful. We take pride in people who are successful. We want more people to be successful. This man started impressive businesses. Bright Horizon, Sports Authority, you name it, Staples. He turned around struggling enterprises. He helped create tens of thousands of jobs. This is a man who knows from personal experience that if you have a small business, you did build that small business. <laughs> Look at his record compared to President Obama's record when he was governor under the Obama presidency. This is an area where the contrast could not be any more clearer. Under President Obama, we have 23 million men and women in this country who are struggling to find work. Nearly one in six Americans today are living in poverty. That's the worst rate we've had in a generation. When Mitt Romney was governor of Massachusetts, unemployment went down. 
Over the last four years, household family income has gone down an average of $4,000. When Mitt Romney was the governor of Massachusetts, household income went up $5,000. The credit rating has been downgraded under the Obama presidency for the first time in our nation's history. Under, under, President, under Governor Mitt Romney, under Governor Mitt Romney, the credit rating was increased. President, hey buddy, how are you doing? USA, 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 USA. <laughs> So, people can shout, people can use words, but people cannot escape the facts. They can't escape the facts at all. Take a look at what President Obama did when he first got into office. What did President Obama do in response to the jobs crisis? His answer to the jobs crisis was borrow with interest a trillion dollars and engage on a government spending spree he called the stimulus. When the president passed the stimulus, he promised that if we passed this big government blowout of borrowed money, unemployment would never go above 8%. Unemployment has never gone below 8% since it passed. But as soon as that stimulus bill passed, as soon as we realized it wasn't going to create the jobs that were promised, President Obama focused all of his attention on passing a partisan government takeover of health care we call Obamacare. What he probably won't say in Charlotte this week is that in addition to all the tax increases on Obamacare, in addition to all the tax increases on families, on job creators, he took $716 billion from Medicare to help pay for Obamacare. What he probably won't tell you is that the Chamber of Commerce surveyed small businesses across America, and 75% of these small businesses said because of Obamacare, they're less likely to hire new workers. The biggest threat to Medicare is Obamacare. And one of the biggest threats to job creation is Obamacare. So for the sake of Medicare and for the sake of jobs, we are going to repeal and replace Obamacare. It is not just enough for us to tell you what we don't like about the Obama administration. It's not just enough for us to point out the failures and the broken promises. We owe you, our fellow citizens, solutions. We owe you an agenda. Five quick things to get people back to work. It's the Romney plan for a stronger middle class to retain jobs and create jobs. Number one, and believe me, Ohioans ought to understand this. We have a lot of energy in this country. Let's use that energy in this country. Coal, gas, oil, nuclear, renewables, all of the above. Think of the jobs, the pipe fitters that could be hired building the Keystone Pipeline. And we have lost a lot of manufacturing jobs in this country. Wisconsin, Ohio, we're, we are in the same boat. You know, we fish out of similar boats in the Great Lakes for great walleye. <laughs> you got bigger walleye here in Lake Erie than we do up in Michigan, I'll tell you that. Yours is, hey, I won't say yours is better tasting, but walleye is the best freshwater fish to eat, bar none, I'll give you that. <laughs> but because a lot of people have lost their jobs in the middle of their lives, in the middle of their careers, we need to have a job training system that people can get good skills to get back to work, to get the lives of the tw and careers of the 21st century. And let's never forget that if we want to have prosperity, 
If we want to create good jobs, we need to make more things in America. We need to grow more things in America and sell them overseas. So we need trade that works for America. We need to hold countries that cheat to accounts. We need to level the playing field so we can make and, and sell our goods. And there's one thing that I've got to tell you. John Kasich, of all people, taught me this lesson. It's a really simple concept, so bear with me. <laughs> We've got to stop spending money we don't have. We got to cut spending. It's really simple. This out of control deficit, this spiraling debt is not only a threat to our economy today, it is bankrupting the next generation, and that's wrong. We've got to fix that. And we've got to champion small businesses. You know, overseas where I come from, which is Lake Superior, <laughs> the Canadians just lowered their tax rate to all their businesses to 15%. President Obama is promising that small, successful businesses will be taxed at rates higher than 40%. When we tax our job creators, take that money and spend it in Washington at rates much higher than our foreign competitors do, they win, we lose. We're not going to stand for that. We're going to fix this. We are going to stop telling you what to do with your money. We're going to stop all the special interests picking winners and losers and just let you keep your money in your pocket in the first place. That's why we're going to cut tax rates. With this agenda, with this goal of getting our economy to grow at 4%, if we do this right, if we put these policies in place, we can create 12 million jobs. That's 452,000 right here in Ohio alone. If we get this economy growing. Our goal is simple. These policies have proven to work. We want growth. We want opportunity. We want to restore the right to rise in America because that is the American dream. Yeah. America is not just the banks of Lake Erie. It's not just Maine to California or Florida to Idaho. America is an idea. It's the only country founded on an idea. And you know what? Sometimes even presidents need reminding what that idea is. And it is really simple. Here it is. Our rights, our rights come from nature and God and not from government. That's the American idea. That's who we are. Our founders created this vision, and every generation since, our veterans fought to preserve that vision, and we thank them for what they've done for us and our country. <laughs> Friends, I know it's hot. I know you've stood in line a long time. I so sincerely appreciate that. This is a defining moment. This is not just who's going to be president for the next four years. This is, what kind of country do we want to have? What kind of people do we want to be? We want to be free. We want to be Americans. This is a defining moment. So, here is the commitment that Mitt and I are making to you, our fellow citizens. We will not duck the tough issues. We will not kick the can down the road. We will lead. We will not blame others for four years. We will take responsibility and fix this country's problems. And 
We will not try to replace our country's founding principles. We will not try to transform America into something it was never intended to be. We will reapply our founding principles. We can do this. We can get this done. With your help, we will get this done. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. God bless. Thanks for coming out, Cuyahoga County. We appreciate you so much. Let's get this done. Thank you. What?